Welcome to day 16 of Natural Beauty Summit's Detox Your Beauty Regimen series. I am Salome Salehi, founder and president at Sugar Sugar Wax, a clean beauty company. And today I have the great pleasure of introducing to you Jessa Blades. Not only has Jessa been working with celebrities as a green clean makeup artist for years, but she's also an educator in the health and wellness space. She's worked with the likes of Deepak Chopra at wellness workshops all around the world. And today she's here to share some excellent tips with us on how to manage stress. We all know that stress is toxic. Our doctors tell us to avoid it. Our friends tell us to keep it at bay. Every yoga class, every meditation practice, frankly, every deep breath we take is to try and keep stress out of our bodies. We all know that stress is toxic. Our doctors tell us to avoid it. Our friends tell us to keep it at bay. Every yoga class, every meditation practice, in fact, every deep breath we take is to keep stress out of our bodies. But if you've been living on this planet in the last six months, chances are you have had some intense stress experiences. Whether it's from the loss of a job, the uncertainty around schools and school schedules, or even going out in the COVID world to do a supply run, you know that feeling of not having control and feeling overwhelmed all at the same time. There is no question about the existence of stress in our lives and in our world. The question is, how the hell do we manage it? Well, thankfully, Jessa has some pretty nifty tools in her stress toolkit that she'll be sharing with us today. So stay tuned. Hi everyone, I'm here with Jessa Blades, natural beauty expert, makeup artist, and herbalist. Now, that doesn't even really begin to scratch the surface of what this woman does on a day-to-day -day basis. But um, hey Jessa, thank you for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. This is so exciting. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you. Um, now you do so much, like from helping people cultivate creativity, help them detox, help them with all kinds of like wellness facets of their life. And um, we're going to touch on at least five tips and tools that you could use um, after our conversation. But I want to start with a morning routine because personally, I've kind of been obsessing with it because I've noticed that when I have a morning routine that I execute, I have a much better day. And um, what are some key considerations for people as they start thinking about this like detox life, yeah. lifestyle and the morning routine? Yeah, so there are so many fun things to add in, but a couple, I like, there's two major things that I love for my clients to implement. Uh, as quickly as possible. So meditation is one. So waking up, no phone, even if it's one minute, two minutes of just breathing, noticing that if you can do 20, awesome. Starting out with one to two minutes can really help center uh, and ground you for the morning. So that's definitely one that I, whenever asked, what's your favorite beauty advice? I always say meditation um, and sauerkraut, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> and then the other thing that I think is really important for women, especially which are the majority of my clients, um, is to consider what your morning is starting with as far as a beverage goes. So no more do I want people waking up first thing, drinking coffee, busy, 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 11, 12 runs around. Oh, maybe I should eat something. That is not good for your body at all. It's not good for your skin, which is a part of your body, which is your largest organ. So what I recommend is having folks wake up, do that meditation if possible, then have a glass of warm water. So it can be 
boiled, it can be room temp, it just can't be cold. So we want to start the digestion after sleeping all night. So that can have lemon in it, it can have apple cider vinegar in it, just warm water. Then I want fat, carb, and a pro fat, carb, and a protein. So some sort of food that you're eating to sort of give the coffee somewhere to land, and then you're allowed to have your caffeine, coffee, whatever it is. Uh, the reason to do this is most of my clients come to me with the following issues. Hormonal issues, stress, anxiety, insomnia, issues with their skin. Um, and I want to figure out ways to help them easily balance their blood sugar and not spike their hormones, their cortisol, their adrenals, and having coffee on an empty stomach and starting your day out that way is doing that. So in a way, it's like we're sabotaging our health um, when we're trying to feel really good and balanced and nourished. So I say try it for 30 days and see how you feel. Start with the warm water, start with eating the fat, carb, and a protein, and then having your caffeine. And most of my clients say that that alone gets them to a whole new place. And then, um, then they can start tweaking and, you know, maybe deeper healing their digestion or deeper healing, um, their blood sugar or their hormones, but that is a real improvement to your morning. Um, and I've been doing some variation of that. I have to yeah. say, I, especially since COVID, like I've definitely had to bring some meditation into my mornings and yeah. it makes a huge difference, but I didn't until recently start doing the warm water thing. Mm -hmm. And I am that person that goes like straight for my cup of coffee. That's my fuel for the morning and having that like big cup of warm water. It not only did, did wonders for like my skin because yeah. like often by like 11 o'clock, I would start to feel like my face is like shrinking because there's like, it's so dehydrated. Yeah. I'm a yeah. diuretic. Right. So not only was I not having water, but also like losing water with yeah. that. So that's really awesome. And I think the link to stress and beauty is huge here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, we're going to get into it, but um, in terms of self-care, which I think since COVID has become extremely important because like salons are not exactly swinging their doors open. I don't know when the next facial that I can book will be. I think, I don't even know how that's going to play out given that yes. like we've become like super heightened awareness about touch and transmitting germs. So in the meantime, what is, what are some self care practices that our viewers can um, do themselves easily at home. Yeah, it's such a good, such a good thing to bring up. And it's so sad because touch is so important and so healing. And as a healer, I, it's so important when I touch somebody's face, it's just as important as the lipstick that I apply on their face is just, it's so calming and nourishing, but um, but the body also doesn't know that it's not, it's not like you touching your face is just as good as somebody else touching your face. So that's, that's the silver lining there. Um, I would say this is where my training and study of Ayurveda comes in. So this is a 5,000 year old life science about healing and health and wellness and looking at every aspect of, um, the way we live our lives. So it's, it's a lifestyle, but in Ayurveda, the idea around massage and self-massage is extremely important. So Abhyanga, a really quick Google search can get you to a lot of how-to videos. Uh, you can follow me. I do a lot of um, sort of self-massage techniques and classes, but it's as simple as getting um, things that are stuck moving again. And we, you know, we can the face feels really good and it's so connected and close to the brain. So we can map out the whole body, learn that map of the whole body where it's mapped on the face and give ourselves massage and relief to the whole body by just using the face. So for instance, um, whether you use your knuckles, which are like my favorite tools. So your pointy knuckles or your fingers, you know, but your knuckles are amazing. Oh, for instance, yeah. If you have um, hip tension, your hips are mapped here. So you can go in and be massaging there. Basically stress and anxiety um, is here. And so you can be massaging your own forehead. I work with these facial reflexology tools that are wonderful. Um, this is one that's great. It's the 
one that's really there you go you can see what it's great is, what for the crystal is that is that such um a it's actually ho sustainable horn um oh. like that it has, falls off animals that isn't yeah um, and so and then there's brass on the bottom so this one's great for jaw rolling jaw tension um so that's for the face. We want blood and lymph to move and we want to be massaging the face and can get real, um, you know, it can help be like a bit of a natural Botox as well. And then the self-massage also covers the whole body. So getting oil, warming it up, coconut oil can be great. Um, sesame oil can be great. Warming it up and then doing a full body massage, circular motions, naked, on an old towel, is one of the best ways we can nourish the nervous system and start to bring our body back to balance, help with the natural detox processes, help um, move, you know, things that are stuck in our lymph and help just really feel grounded in this time when we're feeling so untethered and also so stuck and so out of control. It's a way, it's basically a hug for your nervous system. So self-massage is really powerful. I love that. And are there certain areas like for lymph, for example, that we should be massaging daily? Yeah. I recommend to my clients and like to Google a lymph map because it's actually really easy to see. Um, you know, armpits are a huge one, which brings me to breast massage. One of my favorite kinds of massage touching our breasts is so important. Um, and not something we should just do in thinking, Oh, like, I hope I don't get a lump or something. It's like a, a daily or weekly practice. So again, with some warm oil moving in the direction of your armpit, um, just a really great way to connect to yourself and, um, and definitely move lymph, lymph, especially bras are not good for, um, keeping things moving with underwire and that sort of thing. And so, um, the body needs to expel toxins and we can do that by, um, what comes out of our mouth. We can do that by like peeing and pooping. We can do that by sweating. Um, and so we're trying to always just improve all of that flow so that our body can do that natural detoxification process. Um, and massage is, is a wonderful way to do that. I've literally never heard of a boot massage, but oh yeah, I like it. It makes so much sense. Every day. Over here. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, and you can do it while you watch TV. Like it doesn't need to be on like a crystal chair of amethyst. You know, you can, it doesn't, it can be like while you're on a conference call. No, but that, that doesn't have video, you know, no yeah. one needs to know. Oh, or maybe down here, just the face. Yeah. Just the face. I'm <laughs> massaging my breasts. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so the link between healthy skin and a healthy gut is obviously undisputed now. Yeah. Um, and you do a lot of, you, you focus on this area so much. Can you talk about like what we can do to improve digestion and have a healthy gut? And also if you can just touch on a few foods that you think, um, you're, you've seen that are beneficial um, specifically for reducing stress. Definitely. Yeah. So having a healthy gut allows us to have a healthy immune system, like healthy brain function, um, helps us be able to modulate stress. It's, um, really the root, the second brain, the root of all health. And so thinking about, uh, again, warm water, wonderful for digestion. So no more cold water in general is what Ayurveda teaches us. Uh, so that can just be a simple thing. Just start adding warm water, even in summer. And that's what you're sipping throughout the day. Thinking about pre and probiotic foods are wonderful to help your gut flora. Um, a lot of things disrupt our gut flora, the plastics, the toxins, um, the pharmaceuticals, our food, you know, a lot of things um, disrupt it. So we need to figure out ways to boost it. So prebiotics are adding things like um, Jerusalem artichokes, cold potatoes, onions, garlic uh, into our diet. And then, so those are prebiotics. So that's like the, the food that the bacteria actually eats. Um, and then the probiotics are things, you know, they can be in a supplement, but also the body really likes the actual live foods. So this can be yogurt, beet kvass, kimchi, sauerkraut. This is adding condiment size, like little amounts, not whole jars of sauerkraut to your life, not doing that. Just having like a little sauerkraut in your salad or you're making avocado toast and little, little sprinkling of kimchi. Small amounts are ways to give your body that 
um, that medicine. And also thinking, you know, to your point about what foods to add, um, eating more seaweed is super medicinal and super full of great minerals. Plants like nettle, drinking nettle tea, as herbalists, we say, when in doubt, drink nettles. So good, especially during these wild times. Um, and like thinking about not so much about what is bad or what you should avoid, but always just thinking, how can I boost my food is a really nice mindset that gets us more excited about food as medicine and realizing that, you know, food is, is, um, it's a privilege. So hopefully we get to eat it and, and not listening to all of this wellness, like noise about is my bread the most, uh, gluten-free specialist, most magical. It's like, is it, um, you know, trying to get whole foods, good quality ingredients, and then also honoring the food and its medicine. Um, because knowing that our soil is no longer as nutritious as it once was. So we have to figure out ways to boost in different foods. Um, and that's where herbalism is, you know, we could talk about that all day. And that's sort of where herbalism is a great, um, is a great practice to start learning about for sure. And some of these things, like I didn't realize until we were in lockdown, how easy it is to make sauerkraut or oh, yeah. like kombucha. Yeah. Like it's such a simple, simple way. And it's so rich in, um, probiotics and like, I've even made kimchi. <laughs> so, That's awesome. Yeah. Well, and there's medicine in the nur nourishing of and the cooking of the thing. It's, it's like, yeah, if we're busy, sure. You can go buy sauerkraut. That's great. But in thinking about the way food and the way yeast is in the air and the way, um, you know, centuries before you, people were making their own medicine as their food, it's, it's also a way to counteract all of the noise of capitalism and of the patriarchy and of like this idea that we can just buy our way out of these problems. I can just buy more supplements to then fix my body. That's not how it works. It's about boosting and nourishing but the medicine is also in the doing. So um, if people are so busy and so stressed, try making bread. Making sourdough bread is a meditation, you know, and it's working with the environment and with nature. So it's not just about, let me just go buy it. Um, and yes, of course, buy it from a local person and farmer and that's great, but making it is really medicinal as well. Yeah, sourdough has definitely been on my it's trial. Having a moment for sure. <laughs> it's having a moment in my yeah. house for sure. Yeah, and it's been really fun. But I think what surprises me the most is how simple it is. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. speaking of simple, um, you talked about herbalism and the power of plants. And I yeah. think you know this one thing that's really come out of this COVID is this: it's forced us to all kind of slow down. Yeah. And look at our environment. And um, I was like, why don't I have more plants inside? And one is the, why is the one yeah. plant that I have dying? Oh no. Um, yeah. <laughs> so um, I would love to hear you talk about the healing power of plants, not just as consumables, yeah. but in our environment. Totally. Cause honestly, like I'm having a moment right now where I need more plants in my life and just yeah. seeing like a healthy leaf, like, yeah. Reduces my stress. Yeah, it really does. I mean, there's all the studies on forest bathing and walking and the grounding techniques, walking in nature without shoes on. Unfortunately, some people can't do that. You know, they live in cities and they're going to have to sit and lean up against a tree and get that in a park. Um, but I think it's, I always try and give people the idea of connect with six plants in a day. So this could be when you're eating, this could be as simple as adding more plants to your food, just adding one more bite of cucumber or a lettuce that you've never tried or going to the farmer's market and seeing a wild green that you've never tried and bringing that in. The body loves diversity. It, you know, it's not like, oh, spinach is good for me. I'm going to have spinach as my green five days a week. No, it's, it really likes the mixture of different things. So adding more of that food and those plants to your diet is one thing. Um, another thing that I wish I could send, I'm going to do for all of us is it's a simple act, but it's incense is something simple. And it's a way, I mean, this is juniper incense uh, made sustainably. And um, this is simple. I mean, this is a way to connect to a plant while you're again on a zoom call in a bath, 
cooking dinner, um, sending it all through the internet for you. Thank you. Um, calms me right down, you know, brings me back into my, gets me in touch with my senses, which is a really nice way to deal with stress. So breathing, remembering to take in that deep breath. Um, another way to look at plants is, um, yes, obviously go out and buy more plants if you can, or take saplings or like cuttings from plants or have a friend give you a little piece and start to grow your own. Um, but it, again, we're getting back to herbalism is looking at what's sort of troubling you, where stress is sort of speaking to you. And is it your sleep? Is it your digestion? Is it neck pain? And, you know, I brought a couple of products just to show you quickly, like this, my neck and shoulders, you know, really act up when I'm stressed. And um, in addition to doing my knuckles and massaging right here, because this is where the neck and shoulders are mapped, I also can spray on my neck. Um, this has Arnica, a great plant for uh, muscle pain, peppermint, juniper again, and then cannabis. So this is a CBD based spray, all plant related, helping my body deal with the pain that is associated with how my body reacts to stress. Another way to think about it is um, this is made by an herbalist friend of mine. Um, it's called Hard Work in New Yorker Immune Blend. So this is a tincture. So taking the medicine from the plants, seeping them in alcohol, straining out that plant material, and then you get a tincture. And this one is really has eleuthero, astragalus, reishi mushroom, maitake mushroom, and licorice. And this is to boost, boost my immunity because for many people, when they're stressed, their immune system um, is weakened and that's when they get a cold. Um, also, we're all trying to boost our immunity right now in this time of heightened awareness. So it's like, you know, these plants are here to help us and support us. Mushrooms are an incredible one. Just even eating more like white button mushrooms, always cook them. That's an incredible way to boost your immunity um, and help you. Um, and then I'll just do one more. Um, thinking about this is a one of my favorite tincture blends. It's called Bedtime. It's by Herb Farm. But if sleep is an issue for you, start looking at incorporating these plant allies. You can look at um, California poppy, lemon balm, passion flower, chamomile, lavender, cardamom, um, and these are all plants that help you sleep deeper and. Um, help sometimes people can't sleep because of that anxiety that's right at the front of their high that like blah, blah, blah. great plant for that is passion flower which is in here so kind of getting your eyes open to these herbs most of them are tonic herbs they're very gentle um, a lot of times you can eat them as well as take them in tincture form this is a great way to help with stress and help bring plants into your home when we're stuck here trying to feel better with stress that is awesome. We're going to be sure to link those for you guys. Um, and finally, last but definitely mm. not least, I want to talk about sleep because mm. sleep has been making a huge comeback in all conversations around health and well-being. Yeah. But what you talk about, which I found like so refreshing, mm. is a little periods of rest. And they don't have to be like naps and you don't have to have this whole life hack just to be able to get some rest. I want you to talk about that because I feel like yeah. it can become overwhelming. Like, do you have like the silk pillowcases? Have you like, you know, rid your room of all the EMFs and visual distractions and sleep is very, very important, but I think rest is highly underrated. Talk to us about that. I don't even think people know what we're talking about. I mean, most of my clients, I ask them about rest. It's part of my intake. And they, they're they like, um, yeah, I try and sleep as much as I can at night. And, um, you know, for me, rest has some qualities that uh, it doesn't involve technology. Um, it brings you back to balance. Um, it can be fun. So like rest doesn't mean like, okay, like let me sit here with my eyes closed and like not touch anything. It, it can be, there can be restful activities that sort of bring you back to yourself. Um, you know, and- um, Give us some and, examples. I, yeah. So, well, one thing I was going to say was um, one of my Ayurvedic doctors was, you know, I was talking to her about my sleep and about my rest. And she was like, you know, and I was saying, well, I don't feel like I have enough energy for my life. You know, I have all these events. And she was like, well, you know, when the sun goes down, that's when you should start 
like going down to like, you should start your night. I'm like, but I live in New York city. Hold on. But I have like an event after my eight o'clock event at nine. Then I have a dinner at nine 45. And she was just like, your expectations are completely off. You know, the fact that you don't have enough energy to get through those things is appropriate. So I think that's an interesting part of this conversation as well. And so some examples about rest are, I mean, some people for them, it is a nap. It is a 15 minute nap. Um, and um, one of my favorite Instagram accounts is the nap ministry. I definitely recommend everybody check it out. It's um, just talking about the, um, I learn a lot about rest from their posting, but um, so maybe it's nap for you. Maybe it's a, you know, two song dance break it can feel like your rest from, you know, now it's just a computer and it's zoom all day long. Um, I have a lot of clients who say, well, in addition to my skin, I also have this eye strain. Can you help with my eye strain? Like, are there herbs for eye strain? And I say, well, are you on a computer all day? And yeah, definitely I'm on a computer all day. Okay. So you need to not be for two times of 10 minutes in the morning and the afternoon, and you need to close your eyes. You know, it's not like rocket science. It's not this thousand dollar pillowcase. It's you need to close your eyes and lie down. You need to find a bench to sit on outside and feel the, the air on your face and, you know, connect, find a moment to connect with nature. There's a stream that you can go to sit by it. It's like, how do you take a rest from all of these expectations and this totally unsustainable pace that we're a part of? So it's kind of opting out of that pace is like, is the quality of rest. And it's going to be different for everyone. For me, it's definitely a dance break, definitely dance break. And then I pillow, um, you can take, you can get lavender somewhere. You can get, you can take um, some flax or la and lavender or lavender and rice, take an old sock, put it on your eye. Um, and that is a wonderful way to just lie down for 10 minutes. It does not have to be beautiful and made by a fancy company. <laughs> <laughs> I Throw love some that. nice smelling essential oils and rice even in there and, and have an eye pillow. Oh, I love that. I'm going to try that one too. <laughs> okay. You have been awesome. Thank you so much. Guys, we'll be sure to include all the links and references for you uh, in case you want to try any of those. And um, I don't know, you might have to make a make a tutorial for like how to make a really cute eye pillow. I would love to. So yeah. Stay tuned for that. Yeah. Uh, where can we find you? Yeah, Outside great. The Natural Beauty Summit. Yes, um, jessablades.com is my website, J-E-S-S-A-B-L-A-D-E-S, -S -S -E like blades of grass. Um, and then at jessablades on Instagram is also the best way to, and teaching a lot of virtual workshops and gatherings and um, ways to help, you know, my passion is really helping women and men who come, I love when men come, uh, helping people feel better helping find really easy, fun, and nourishing ways to take care of yourself. So um, on that um, note, actually, yeah. I'm going to sneak in one more question. Because, okay, great. Um, you talk about building your team and yeah. for wellness mm. and health and all things beauty, um, but because uh, they're all interconnected. Uh, talk about the team to us because I think this is really important. People are starting to recognize the need for it, but the way you talk about it really underscores yeah. the simplicity of it. Yeah. Thank you. So I think it's just, I think we're, we're found a time in our culture where, um, people are needing alternative, alternative solutions. They're not feeling well and they're not being heard or empowered with their health. And so I think, when I think about a team, I think about you being the boss. You you are the boss of your body. Your intuition, your lived experience, your anecdotal life is you are the expert. So any doctor in a white lab coat like works for you, and um, and so empowering, especially women who have have had a history um, of not being heard or listened to, and especially people of color too. I mean that's a huge problem with Western medicine. So. Western medicine definitely has its place, but um, finding whether you can afford it or you can find community resources, herbalists are always really um, affordable and it's the people's medicine. So finding an herbalist in your area, finding different people who are listening to you, seeing you for more than 15 minutes, hearing, um, looking at symptoms um, in, as, in a holistic way, you know, an intake should be an hour. If 
we have the privilege of that. You know, it should really be the seeing how everything is connected. And then on this journey, we need a team because it's hard to be different than other people and not just follow advice blindly. So finding people who can share recipes with you and acknowledging a friend who's also on a health journey. And even if it's virtually now having that support, um, this is, you know, taking care of ourselves in an empowered way, in a holistic way is not mainstream yet. And I can't wait for it to be. Um, but I think to just think of it as this isolated thing, especially when we're feeling so isolated in these times, um, is going to be too hard. So I would say normally go with your friends, go for a walk, go start, you know, start your Pilates journey together, but now we're going to have to do it online. Um, and, but just thinking about doing it alone when we are these social creatures is just, um, it's just too hard. And also there's not enough empowerment. So I think finding like-minded people is just the most important thing right now. I love that. And I think yeah. it's such a powerful paradigm that it's your health. So yeah. you're the boss. Like you see yourself as this like central role in your own well-being. I mean, it seems like common sense, but so often we entrust others to give us answers about our bodies. Right. And I, I love this the shift in paradigm because it really does empower people that you're the yeah. boss and it's everyone else's job, everyone on your team's job to yeah. help you achieve your like health goals. Totally. And and I I will also just say to you know, we need to also think of ourselves in community as well. So, um, so, you know, nobody is really well until we're all well. So it's like, if you have, you know, the privilege to, um, you know, say you're going to hire a midwife for your birth and go out of the, the mainstream Western medical, um, birthing model, that's great. But also, can you be donating, funds and resources to um, Black maternal health that is um, very in need of um, real revolution because of the disproportionate um, number of mothers who die in childbirth, that, that sort of thing. So it's like, how can we take this healing for ourselves and then also give back to those who need support and lifting up, I think makes us feel better. And if nothing else, do it for selfish reasons because you want to feel better, but also do it because um, we are all connected and the interconnectedness is something we're seeing now. And I think, um, it makes us, we don't even realize how ill it makes us all feel. Um, and that's an exciting moment that we're in, hopefully seeing that more. And so taking care of our community is, is really important. Thank you for touching on that. Yeah. And that is so, so important. And it's ironic that at a time where we're socially isolated is the time that we become so aware of how much we need our community. Yeah. And right. everyone in it, everyone in it to be well. And yeah. anyway, yeah. thank yeah. you. You've oh, touched on so many great <laughs> things. Thank you for being with us, Jessa. My pleasure. And uh, we'll include all the links and resources. And uh, this was a great message um, for you to feel empowered about your own health and also feel responsible for the health of your community. I love that. Okay, thank you.